Along with the release of the amazing X lookup function was the release of another X function, and this is the X match function. Its predecessor is the match function, and both functions do the same thing. They return a relative position in a list. Now, in isolation, this doesn't provide much value, but if you're looking to look something up based on the position of the list, it'll return the corresponding row number or column number that you're looking for. And it can do so dynamically as well. So if you change your lookup value, it'll return the different row or column number for you. The X match function comes with additional criteria that allows you look up a match in other ways, just like the X lookup function does. Now the match function was traditionally used with the index function. So you would use index match and match to look up a kind of a table structure and return an intersecting point. And if you wanted to do this dynamically, index and match worked absolutely perfect. What we're going to do is have a quick look at the old index and match function, and then we're going to look at X match and its additional capabilities. So let's first have a quick look at the syntax for our X match. So I have two tables of data and we're going to tr go through some examples with these. The first table of data contains shipping date, customer, number of packages and shipping code. And we're going to look up the shipping code from this table here and return it here using index and match. And then we're going to look at some more powerful examples of where we can get the last shipment date also using the X match function. But first, let's take a quick look at X match. So X match looks for a lookup value. It then looks for a lookup array. We then have the option for a match mode and a search mode. And you'll be familiar with these now from the new X lookup function. So on its own, if we wanted to look up the A001 and find the relative position in a list, we can look it up in this list here. Now, traditionally, if we were using the X function, we'd have to select zero for an exact match. Whereas the same as with X lookup, X exact match comes as the default setting. So now we can just close this formula and press enter and we will get the relative position in the list. If we change this to a different number, it's dynamic, it'll return a different relative position in the list. So that's basically the, the basics of X match. So let's take a look at this now in our example. So we want to return the shipping code for the particular customer. So we're going to do this using index and match. So we will start with index. And remember, index returns the intersecting point between a row and a column. So the first thing it is looking for is the array that we're going to look it up in. Well, I'm just looking it up in the, or I just want to return from the shipping codes. Then it's looking for the row number. Well, the row number is going to be dynamic and it'll depend as we pull the formula down what code, what customer it is that we're looking for. So we need to look up the row number for the customer. So for this, I'm going to use X match. Now this is looking for a lookup value. After this, it's looking for a lookup array, which is our customer numbers in the table. Now I'm going to lock that in. And we're looking for an exact match. So I can just close the formula here. Now I'm also going to lock these values in here as well. And I forgot my second bracket. Now when I pull this down or fill this formula down, it returns for us our shipping code. So we see our customer A00 is one. So we've got one here. B003 is two and it's returned the two for us. And C002 is one and it's returned that for us. So that is the basics of XLOOKUP, but let's see how much more we can do with this. Well, let's say in this table here, we want to pull in our last shipment date. So our shipment date is in this column here. We want to look up our customer here and we want to return the shipment date. So we need to look up the last row that each customer appears in. So again, we can start with our index function and our index is first looking for the array. So this is where we want to return a value from. So we want to return it from our ship date column. 
Then it's looking for a row number, and this is where our X match comes in. So our lookup value is going to be our customer. Our lookup array is going to be our customer, our column of customers. And then we are going to select a match mode of exact. So exact is default. You don't have to put in zero. You can just put in another comma to skip it because it takes zero as default. Now we have our search modes. So we can search first to last, last to first, and we can also do binary searches. If we select last to first, it's going to return the last date for us. So I am going to close the bracket. And again, I'm going to lock in these values here. So I can just pull this formula down and hit enter. And I'm going to pull this down. And we can see that the last shipment date for each customer is the 10th of January 2021. So let's check this. Here's our last one for A001, our last for B003, and our last for C002. Now let's just change this date in here. Let us change it to 2023, just for example. And we see how that date then updates and returns the last date. So that is the X match function. It is very like the new criteria is very like the new criteria that are available in the X lookup function. So if you're familiar with working with X lookup, working with X match is rather easy indeed.